thought I was making it and realized I was scraping the right side. Today in Cruise Man's Garage, we're going to see if we can help Don Smith get rid of some of these scratches on his right saddlebag on his 2018 Honda Goldwing. Okay, so Don, tell us what happened to your Goldwing. My wife has a business partner who parks in the driveway, which is my only path out of the garage and onto the street. And I have to go in and interrupt their meetings to get her to move to the curb so I could get out. But this time she parked far enough away from the car to where I thought I didn't have to disturb them. So I sneaked between the cars and made it. Went for my ride. When I came back, I started threading myself between the cars, thought I was making it and realized I was scraping the right side. I had to correct for that. I freed up and pulled on in. There was the scratch. And what have you done so far to try to repair it? Because I can see it looks like you've done something. Yeah, I rubbed it with this finger. With, <laughs> I just, I just. With just the finger, nothing that's else? That's it, that's all I've done. Okay. The first thing I wanna do is give this area a really good deep wash. I'm using some Dawn dishwashing liquid and I wanna give it a good thorough uh, wash to strip away not just the dirt but any potential uh, protectants that might be on the paint like waxes or polishes. I just want to make sure we have a start with a good clean surface. I should also mention that normally you would never wash your motorcycle or your car using Dawn dishwashing liquid or any dishwashing liquid because it's extremely harsh and it will strip away most likely any wax or protection that you have on the paint. You should use a car wash soap that's specifically designed for washing the paint. Now you've got some, you've got one tiny little place over here I can still see. Where is it? Most of this is just scuffs on the clear coat. My guess is when you rubbed it with your finger, there was probably some dust on the paint or something. And it's just scratched the clear coat when you did that. I'm just guessing. So what I was explaining to Don, it might have been kind of hard to hear on the video, is that if your paint is dirty or has dust on it and you rub it with your hand or your finger or anything, you're going to run the risk of scratching the paint because the dust or the dirt just kind of acts like sandpaper when it's under your finger and you're rubbing it. So you want to be very careful never to rub the paint when it's not clean. Here, when I'm observing the paint, I notice there's one spot, looks about a half an inch wide, and I can catch it with my fingernail. Usually, if you can catch a scratch with your fingernail, that means it has penetrated the clear coat, may actually go down to the base coat. The only way to truly repair that would be with some touch-up paint, maybe even some touch-up clear, and then wet sand it back to the surface. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do the best we can with what we have. Here you can see the areas of concern that I'm going to be working on today. This is the half inch scratch, kind of a horizontal scratch in the paint that I think has gone through the clear coat. I can catch it with my fingernail and I think it's too deep to be uh, wet sanded out. It probably needs a little touch up paint, maybe some touch up clear and could be brought back pretty easily, but we don't have all that here today. So we're going to do the best we can just to try to minimize uh, how bad this looks. There's another fairly deep scratch toward the front of the saddlebag that kind of runs at an angle. This scratch too may have penetrated the clear coat, but I'm not positive. I'm going to work on it. I think I can probably get this out with some polish, but we'll just have to see. Looking at his paint here with this light, you can see there's a lot of scratches on here. There's one right there that probably needs to come out. You can almost catch your finger on that one. And if you can catch your fingernail on a scratch, that's usually an indication that it's gone maybe even down into the, into the paint. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet sand this spot right here a little bit and this scratch right here. And hopefully we can do some good with that. So 
what Don brought with him, a 3000 grit 3M um, sanding pad, which is really made to go on a rotary polisher like my Grios, but I'm not comfortable using it on a rotary. And generally, uh, when you're correcting a scratch, I like to go um, 90 degrees. This, the scratch is going this direction. I don't want to, I don't want to sand it in the same direction as the scratch. I want to sand it opposite because what you end up with in this clear coat is a is kind of a valley wherever that scratch is. It's like a little valley, and if you go with the scratch, you'll just make that valley wider. Whereas if you go against the scratch, you're just kind of knocking down the peaks of that valley. You probably aren't going to get rid of it, but you'll try to make it less visible where you don't see it. Here's a graphic to kind of better illustrate what I'm talking about. Here you can see the various layers of paint that are on your motorcycle or car. In this case, we have an ABS plastic base or substrate. On top of that is a layer of primer. On top of that is your base coat. That's what gives the uh, paint your color, uh, either red, blue, white, depending on the color of your motorcycle. The base coat is the pigmented coat. And then on top of that, the very top is the clear coat. Now, it's about twice as thick as your base coat and your primer, but it's also very soft. And the clear coat is what protects the base coat. It has UV inhibitors in it. It also gives the paint the gloss and the shine. Now, all of these examples I'm talking about today are for gloss paint, not matte finish paint. And here you can see just kind of a cutaway example of what that scratch might look like if it simply penetrates the clear coat. Now, what we want to do with wet sanding or even polishing to some degree is we're going to basically going to be removing some of that clear coat to get it down below that scratch. Now, here are a couple of examples of really deep scratches that have completely penetrated the clear coat and intruded on the base coat and on the example on the right actually down into the primer. Uh, it could even go all the way down into the uh, substrate, the plastic or the metal on your car. And you can't really correct those types of scratches by simply wet sanding. Uh, that requires some touch-up paint or possibly even re-sanding down the panel and repainting it and blending it in and all that, which I don't get into. So what we can do though, even if the scratch is barely into that base coat, we can minimize the effect and the look of it. And that's what we're going to try to do today. Maybe do some touch-up paint later on down the road. And I'm going to use water with this sanding, I'm going to wet my... This is 3,000 grit. I may have to go to 1,500 or 2,000. And I'm going to go real light at first. In some places, I'm speeding up the video so that you don't have to sit through watching me do all this tedious work. I probably spent, oh, maybe three to five minutes wet sanding this one scratch. Okay, I can dry it off. I can still see a little bit of that scratch. And of course, when you wet sand the clear coat and you dry it off, it's going to look real dull. And that's because you're taking off some of that clear coat and you have to polish it out to get the gloss back. And I'm, I mean, I'm barely putting any pressure at all on this sanding pad. Now after wet sanding you can see how dull the finish is. That's because in essence we're scratching the paint. We're placing very fine scratches in the clear coat to get rid of the larger scratches uh, caused by whatever damage there was. Now this these smaller scratches from the 3000 grit sandpaper uh, will buff out with polish later on. 
And there's also some little marring pieces up here. I have to be careful up here because clear coat is much thinner on these edges, on these corners than it is down here. So you have to really be careful or you'll burn through the clear coat. And I don't know if I even want to wet sand that. I think I'm just going to try to hit it with some polish and even then I have to be careful. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a pretty dull finish here because we've basically been scratching the paint. I don't know if I want to go much farther with this because I am not that familiar with how thick the clear coat is, and I don't have a paint thickness meter. I'm going to start out with this uh, Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions Precision Platelet, Platelet One and Done Compound. It says it will take out scratches from 1500 grit uh, scratches, and this is just 3000, so it should uh, take out these scratches. And Instructions say to shake it really well, which I'm doing. Three little dots start out like that. I'm using an orange correcting pad on a three inch Griot's orbital polisher. And I'm just going to kind of pat the polish around because I don't want, I don't want to fling off when I start polishing. I may have to use a little more. And uh, we'll start out with a slow speed, probably just a two, just to spread it a little bit. I'm going to go up to about a five. And I'm not putting too much pressure on this. Definitely looking better. I'm going to get over here a little more. I'm going to put a little more polish on my pad. can still see the this little scratch here and even this scratch up here I'm gonna hit it a little bit more now I'm gonna put a final polish on this with this red pad it's a little bit softer uh, it's more of a final finish pad even though it looks really good right now I'm pretty pleased with this turtle wax uh, platelet finish. So I'm going to put this pad on, go back down to a level two, and I'm going to use the same hybrid solutions. You can get a little more gloss in your finish just by changing to a polishing pad instead of a cutting pad. So here I'm using the exact same compound, but I'm just going over it with a softer pad. Okay, and for those of you that aren't aware, the first pad I was using was a red pad. I'll put it. A, I'll put a link in the description below. I'm not using a Griot's pad. The Griot's polishing pad would have been a black pad. I have some. I just didn't use it. These I got from my brother. I actually got the polisher from my brother as well. I think he got the newer model. I'll put a link to this three inch polisher in the description of the video as well. It's a Griot's garage. Really nice polisher. And because it's a three inch, uh, it's much easier to get in some of these little narrow tight places on a motorcycle. I could have used a six inch pad here or a five and a half inch, 
but um, you really don't need it. This three inch will do just about anything you need on a motorcycle and some tight places on cars too. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this off with a little protective coating. This is the uh, Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions ceramic spray coating. Um, it's actually a very, very good product. I use it on my Lexus and I just don't wanna send them out here without any protection on the paint at all. So it's very easy to apply. You just uh, couple of mists on something this size, probably just one squirt and it'll do it. And it will just basically wipe it around and then wipe it off. Now, unlike car waxes we used in the old days, these new paint protectants do not need to dry to a haze or anything. You simply spray them on. Uh, you don't have to let them sit very long. You just simply wipe them off with a clean, soft cloth. And I'm going to go ahead and treat this one twice. You always want to work on this paint. You always want to work in a shaded area. You don't want to ever apply anything on hot paint surface. We're in my garage. It's a pretty cool day out. It's only about 62 degrees. So whether you're using a polish or any kind of uh, sealant product or paint protection, always work in a shaded area. Yeah, it just really feels good. Now it needs to cure for about 24 hours before you take it out in the rain or any elements. I think it's okay to ride the bike in nice weather you just don't want it to be you don't want to get rain on it or anything until it cures probably be best to leave it in the garage overnight actually happy with the way it turned out so far cruise van i am beyond happy i am happy on top of happy i saw it before and my heart sank and i you've done a wonderful job uh of uh Fixing that, I, I'm just, I can feel so proud of riding this bike again.